Hello, my name is Yannick Pelletier, I'm a Swiss Grandmaster and in this video we're going to take a look at the first of the World Chess Candidates Tournament played in Berlin. Uh, two players from Russia, former world champion Vladimir Kramnik against Alexander Grishuk. Kramnik is a player who has always taken a lot of time and effort, put a lot of effort in his opening preparation and in recent years he's been actually devising surprises uh, early on in his games, sometimes tailor-made for his opponents and he knows that Alexander Grishuk is a player who is kind of addicted to time trouble. In other words, if you want to bring Grishuk into time trouble, you don't have to do much just give him food for thought early on in the game and this is exactly what Kramnik has done in this game. So let's take a look at this. Kramnik starts with white, with d4, knight f6, knight f3, g6 and now quite a rare move here, b3 compared to c4 of course, which could lead to main lines in the King's Indian for instance or the Grunfeld where Grishuk feels at ease. After b3, what he wants to get is his opponent. He wants to bring his opponent out of balance. He doesn't want to have any debate in the opening. And um, nevertheless, what, what he wants to get is a position which is simply playable, perhaps without any special opening advantage for white, but basically playable, where he can hope to outplay his, uh, nevertheless, formidable opponent later on. Grishuk plays absolutely all right at the start of the game. He plays c5, d takes c5, queen a5 check, forcing some concession by white, whether he plays bishop d2 or c3. No move is really a move which uh, white uh, would really like to do here. Well, Kramnik chose knight bd2, queen takes c5, Bishop b2, bishop g7, e3, castle, c4. Well, we could talk about his opening choice for, uh, well, actually many, many, uh, long time actually. Uh, we actually have on the board some kind of Catalan, uh, Reti Catalan reversed, uh, as if black were playing with the white pieces. So Kramnik accepts to get a position where he doesn't basically have any opening advantage, but his pieces are well developed and he's going to have a, a plan quite easily devised at his um, disposal later on. Grishuk played b6, bishop e2, bishop b7, castle, queen c7, rook c1. And we actually have a very typical pawn structure here with this pawn here on c4 giving some space advantage to white. If we had this pawn even on e4, we could even speak of some sort of um, hedgehog uh, pawn structure or Maroxi pawn structure, very typical with the bishop on g7 for, for, for black here. So we actually have a, a, an absolutely normal pawn structure. The only question is what are both sides going to choose as plans? Here, uh, Grishuk uh, went on very logically, but he could perhaps have tried to play knight c6 and then followed with maybe rook a d8, queen b8 and an early d5. That would have been a possible plan in order to try and equalize uh, concretely and possibly directly. Instead of that, he went d6 well, intending to put the, bishop, the, the knight on d7. And here, a very interesting moment, because when you have this pawn structure with white, a, um, this pawn here on c4, actually the, the knight doesn't really belong here on d2. It needs to come to c3. This is its ideal square. In order to try and occupy one of those nice squares here on b5 and d5 and this explains Kramnik's next move knight b1 knight bd7 knight c3 rook ac8 rook c2 this is this is another 
move I really like because Kramnik is intending a regrouping of his pieces and um, well we've seen it in, a, in another line the queen on the black queen on c7 doesn't really feel at ease on the same file as the right rook here so very naturally he goes back to b8 and now we have the idea of Kramnik queen a1 it's not really about putting pressure on the long diagonal here um, well, it can play a part, of course, but he basically wants to uh, coordinate his two rooks. So he's going to double rooks, but it's not yet clear whether he's going to double rooks on the C file or, as happened actually in the game, on the D file. Well, after A6, things become a bit clearer because um, Black may want to play B5, opening the C file against the C C2 rook. So uh, it might make sense to play rook fc1 here, but I prefer Kramnik's move rook d2, which actually places rooks on the semi-open d file. Rook fe8, rook fd1, bishop a8, another very typical move in these positions. And now we've come to a point where white has actually completed development, we can say so. All his pieces have been placed uh, normally. And the case is, is, it's also the case for black. And now we, we need to find a plan. And I quite like the next move by Kramnik, knight g5. And actually, I, I was one of the commentators of this first round in Berlin on site together with Judith Polgar. And our thoughts diverged a bit on this move because I was saying that basically Kramnik's idea was okay, this knight is not going to stay forever on g5, of course, but it's going to be rerouted to f4 in order to try and control this important uh, outpost on d5. While um, Judith Polgar believed rather that White's intention, intentions were to play f4 or perhaps after h6 to go back simply to f3 and try and benefit later on of a slight weakness of Black's king. But in, in fact, after, knight, after rook c5 here, um, Kramnik didn't play f4, this would be a bit committal and would also allow a move like b5. So Kramnik went back to h3, proving that my idea was right, or actually I had actually guessed his idea. b5 came nevertheless, knight f4, b takes c4, bishop takes c4. I mentioned at the start of this video that Kramnik's basic idea when choosing such an opening was to try and get Grishuk into time trouble and this is exactly what happened. Grishuk was very low on time already here after 21 moves. He was something like 8-7 minutes down. Uh, you know, so it's, it's really already time trouble looming especially in such a complicated position. He went for rook g5. This is a risky choice which um, actually backfired mm, but considering um, that probably white is slightly better anyway uh, taking trying to take his chance on the king side with an attack against g2 somehow look at the bishop on a8 um, i think this was practically quite an interesting decision um, and kramnik was not far from going astray later on knight cd5 here I think black should have taken on d5. Bishop takes d5, bishop takes b2, queen takes b2, knight f6. Bishop takes a8, queen takes a8. When here, let's say that this position can be assessed as very, perhaps very slightly better for white, but at first he needs to uh, take some measures against um, those ideas against g2, so he can't immediately play something like rook c1 rook c2 because then e5 would come and this would be quite terrible. So I think this was the best continuation for Grishuk in this position. Instead of that he went really for full, com uh, full complications, knight e5. Bishop e2 is normal and knight e4. Seems attractive, both knights of black jumping to central squares, gaining tempi. This looks very logical, but in fact, all this will backfire. And Kramnik could have played rook c2, he said afterwards this would have been a logical continuation, but he wasn't really sure after e6. In fact, h4 
And white is, is actually um, taking over here, is getting uh, the better position. But in the game, rook d4 was actually okay as well. Knight c5, h4, rook f5. The rook is a bit in dire straits. And here Kramnik went for a very normal move, but um, which was actually not the best. And Grishuk reacted well after that. Um, well, afterwards, it's very easy. The, the following line sh should have led more or less to a winning position for white, but it would have been very complicated with limited time to see this, or actually even with a lot of time. Look at the following line, g4 would have been actually the best move. The thing is after rook takes e4, f4, which is more or less forced, you take back with a pawn on e4 and you need, uh, on f4, and you need to take into consideration e6. And now it's, it's getting a complete mess. Knight e7, this is already something which is very tough to see. Rook takes, rook takes d6. Now, now everything is hanging, not only the knight here, but also a check on d8, winning the queen. Black has no choice, he needs to go queen b7. And this is where actually I think it's basically impossible even for people like Kramnik or Grishuk to calculate all this in advance correctly at the board. The right move is f3. Now of course knight takes f3, bishop takes f3, queen takes f3. It appears as if black is going to mate the white king very soon, but in fact white is first. Rook d8 check. And the following combination as well is very complicated, very tough to see. Bishop f8, now you need to sacrifice it and first give a check on d8, rook e8, bishop g7. And it's mate on the next move. If you go to g8, of course, the rook will be taken. And if you play king e7, a beautiful mate, queen f6. Well, as said, very, very tough to see for uh, anyone here in this moment, especially with limited time. Kramnik went for the natural e4, rook takes f4, knight takes, Knight takes e4. Black has got a pawn for the exchange and his pieces are well centralized. I think he has some compensation here. Kramnik went knight d5. Knight c5 back. Rook b4. Queen a7. Knight e3. The knight here back to e3 on a nice square. When, um, well, it protects g2, keeps some nice squares under control, so it's doing a good job. But after a5, rook b5 here, actually Kramnik already understood that positionally black has got compensation. And this is why after knight e6, he, this, he took a very practical, a very strong practical decision actually, not to allow these knights to jump anymore. He gave back the exchange on e5. Securing actually an edge here after bishop takes e5. Queen c5, bishop takes g7, knight takes g7. White's pieces are slightly better placed, more centralized, except the queen for the moment. Look at the knight here on e3, the bishop and the rook, all occupying nicely centralized squares. The same cannot be really said about the knight on g7. This problem will be actually highlighted later on in the game. Well, actually, I said, except the queen, the white queen is not centralized. This is why Kramnik played queen d4, thus exchanging black's most active piece, the queen on c5. Takes, takes, bishop c6. Otherwise, the white rook would have entered here to d7. Now a good move. Actually, Kramnik would like to occupy the c file with his rook, but he can't go here immediately because of bishop b5. This is why he went back to d2. Here the best move clearly for, for black would have been um, asking the knight. Are you happy there on g7? The knight would have said no, 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 not at all. I need to go back to the center. e6 is my square. This is how, where I have to go. Still, white is slightly better after ic4, but this would have, uh, have allowed Grishuk to fight much more uh, in a much more resilient way than rook b8. Well, we'll see his idea, but actually it proved insufficient. Rook c2, bishop e8. Pretty passive, actually. Rook c7, forcing king 
f8. Well, forcing, because if you play a4, playing for counterplay immediately, then pawn takes a4, check king h2. If you take here on a4, I can take the pawn on e7. And, well, it's getting tricky, actually. Um, it looks as if black is equalizing after rook b2, because he's going to gain back the pawn here, bishop f3. Um, rook takes a2, but things are more complicated and you can see that even f2 is hanging. The rook can take it here next move. But the computer shows that uh, white is still better. Rook a7, thanks to the spin here. Bishop b3, rook b7. And you can't go back to e6. This is the problem now. Rook b8 again this night on g7, the troublemaker for black. So you need to go back to a4 in order to protect that square. You need to retreat the knight against the check. But here after knight g4, you know, white still has a strong initiative and it's very even very likely that he's going to win a pawn soon. Knight h6, for instance, or bishop d5. This pawn on f7 appears to be doomed. So white, especially keeping the rook on the board, rooks on the board, white will keep excellent winning chances here. So king f8, especially in time trouble, appears to be very sensible, very natural. Rook a7, a4. B takes a4. Rook b1 check. 40, 40th move has been reached, time control uh, has been passed, so Grishuk had time now to think, but it appears that this endgame is very tough. And, well, king h2? Perhaps should he have gone to b2 immediately, but the problem is bishop c4 here. And even if white loses f2, the a pawn, I mean the, the one which is further advanced on a5 now, is very dangerous. You can't really get back behind the pawn with this rook here. How do you want to do that? This is hardly possible. This bishop plays a very good job here. Um, keeping a2 under control and everything. So um, it's, you know, perhaps a bit early to speak about the winning position for white, but it's very close to that. In fact, rook b4 is no improvement to this line. Here, Kramnik played a5. Rook takes h4, check. King g1, this is important to go to g1. You know, if you go to g3, you'll be subject to some kind of check on, it, on f5. This is not something you want to allow. Rook a4, bishop c4 again. And there is a problem for, uh, for black that um, the rook will not be able to maintain itself behind the a pawn because, they, you know, white just wants to play basically bishop b3. And if you play rook a3, there will be knight c2 or knight c4 winning the rook. Well, Grishuk played bishop c6, but this hastens the end here after rook c7. The bishop doesn't really have any good square to go because of rook c8 check. So Grishuk just went back to e8, a6, knight h5, knight d5. Well, on that moment when the knight finally went out to h5, after knight d5, it appears that white is completely winning. He's, well, of course, he can take on e7 soon, but he can also play... Uh, knight b6 followed by a7 and a8, queening the pawn, forcing black to give up his rook, so the position is obviously completely winning. Um, in short, what can we say? Um, Kramnik's um, opening idea, strategy, has worked extremely well, I think, because he's, uh, he's brought the game into unknown waters when Grishuk needed to think from, from the scratch, basically, from scratch, and that means Grishuk loves to take his time. Grishuk ended up in time trouble already around move 20. And, um, you know, at some point you'll need to, you know, you'll need to calculate lines very accurately. Um, and for that you need a lot of time. Grishuk didn't have, he lacked this time on critical junctures. And this actually, um, you know, caused his defeat eventually, together, of course, with Kramnik's beautiful technique. Thank you for your attention. Um, of course, I'm inviting you to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.